What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to be talking about AC and DC voltages. I'm just going to briefly introduce you to these concepts and kind of talk about the, dif the differences between the voltages. We are actually going to be looking at these in more detail in a future video when we look at how these voltages are produced, especially AC voltages. As always, I want to take a moment to thank the National Fluid Power Association for sponsoring these videos. We're going to take a look today at how some of these voltages apply to fluid power systems. Now there is no way that as an educator that I can mention AC and DC voltages without going back to the history of AC and DC. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about this. Um, if you want to see a great story about Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison, you can click on this link to view the Modern Marvels video. They did a fantastic job on this and I highly encourage you all to go through and look at this. It's a great video that talks a lot about the history, but just to give you an overview, years ago in the late 1800s, Thomas Edison was really pushing DC voltage on everybody in residence. It was at the cusp of the uh, second industrial revolution and Thomas Edison put all of his money into DC voltages. He later hired Nikola Tesla who was an immigrant to help him perfect this process. There were several problems with the DC voltages though. One of the problems being that you could not transmit over long distances. The idea behind the story of the uh, current wars, this is what it was called, is that Thomas Edison did not pay Nikola Tesla what he originally promised him that he would pay. And so Nikola Tesla left, Nikola Tesla invented three-phase AC power, most of the production and distribution of our electricity in our houses is exactly the way Nikola Tesla designed it years ago. Long story short, Nikola Tesla won and we have AC power in all of our residents across the world. So we're going to start by AC voltages. And again, we're going to talk in more detail about this in a future video, but um, this is a picture of a coal-fired power plant that produces AC voltage. And the large majority of our power plants produce AC voltages. Let's look at what AC voltage is. So if you were to connect an oscilloscope to your wall outlet, this is what it would look like. This is an AC waveform. If you notice, it's oscillating. And we know that in the United States, it oscillates at 60 hertz, which is 60 times per second. Again, we'll discuss this in more detail in the future. But just right now, you need to understand that if you are in the United States and you have 120 volts in your wall outlet, that this is what your voltage would look like oscillating at 60 hertz. The AC waveform constantly goes from a positive peak to a negative peak, again, 60 times a second. Now in industry, this is what we have. This is called three phase power. And so basically what we have in industry is three of the single phases that we have in our house that are joined together at 120 degrees apart. Again, we will find out how this is produced in a future video, but just understand that this is extremely more efficient than single phase. One of the biggest reasons why is because this power never completely shuts off like single phase does. So that is the reason why a lot of industry uses three phase powers to run motors and a lot of the heavier, heavier equipment. Here's an example of a industrial control system called a motor control circuit. If you notice at the top, you'll see L1, L2, and L3 on your AC lines. Those are going directly to a motor that connected to the T1, T2, T3 connections of a motor. Also, you can see that there are taps on L1 and L2 that bring them down and you'll see a start stop push button and a motor contactor. You don't have to understand what a lot of these are at this point. We can look at these in a future video. But one thing I want you to understand is that that is three phase coming in at the top to drive the electrical motor. But in order to control that motor, we tap into two of the phases to get 110 volts for our motor controls. This is traditional motor control circuit and traditionally in industry, we use 120 volts to control all of our motors. 
Now let's look at DC voltage real quickly. I've got a picture of solar panels because solar panels is one of the few power producers that produces DC voltage. If you see solar panels on your house, actually what is happening is that solar panel is producing DC voltage and then we invert that to AC to connect to our house. There are several ways to do this. It could be a grid connected system where you're still connected to the power company. It could be a separate system like TVA requires you to do where you have a separate meter and you're just selling your power back to the electric company. Or it can be an off-grid system where you have battery backups. You can technically have battery backups in any of those, but if you have an off-grid system, you have to have battery backups because you're not producing power whenever the sun is not shining. But again, these solar panels produce DC voltages. A DC waveform is very simple. You can see this on oscilloscope because it does not oscillate, it's constant. It is also polarized where an AC waveform is constantly swinging positive and negative 60 times a second. A DC waveform has a positive and a negative polarity. We're gonna see this when we look at the symbols at the end. But whenever you see these waveforms, understand that it is constant. It does not change at all. So if we're looking at 24 volts, that's what the waveform will look like. It'll be at 24 volts and it'll just be constant. In industry, motor controls is actually changing quite a bit. And so more industry is actually using DC voltages to control their motors. One of the biggest reasons for this is for safety reasons. So in industry, you'll have something like this. This is a DC power supply that connects to 120 volts at the top, but it converts it to generally 24 volts DC for all of your controls. So instead of having 120 volts go into your start and stop buttons and your coils, you have 24 volts DC. So that way, if a technician or engineer accidentally gets across this voltage, it's not as dangerous. Now, this is the electrical symbols for AC and DC. To the left, we have a DC power cell, two cells, and you can see it's polarized. The longer, the longer line at the top represents the positive and the shorter line at the bottom re represents the negative. To the right is an AC waveform. Again, it's not polarized, so you just have the symbol for an AC waveform. Now, some of the common voltages that we will see in industry are 24 volts, which is generally, like I mentioned earlier, motor controls supply, five volts, which is a put hobby supply because a lot of things like Arduino and, and things like that run off five volts, zero to 10 volts analog signal. This represents four to 20 milliamps, zero to five volts analog signal. And then there's another one that I did not list on there, which is actually another form of 24 volts but it's actually a current signal called four to 20 milliamps, but it runs on 24 volts. As far as the AC voltages in industry, 120 volts can be used both in residential and in motor controls. And then also in some of the office buildings and things like that in the industry, 240 volts is generally used in residential for things like a water heater, a dryer, things like that. 480 volts is three phase. So a lot of times you'll have what's called Y and Delta 480 volt systems in industry. 277 volts, you'll see a lot of times in industrial lighting, and it's actually one phase off of 480 volts, three phase. Finally, you've got 208 volts, which is the lower three phase. One phase off a 208 volt system is actually 120 volts. So we can see that you have a wide range of different types of voltages in industry. In fluid power systems, a lot of times we'll use voltages like I showed you for motor controls to control things like proportional valves, directional control valves, or other types of solenoids that we can use to actually drive a fluid power system, whether that be hydraulics or pneumatics. So this is just a brief introduction to the two types of voltages. I hope this video has helped you and, it, and helped you understand a little bit of the differences between DC and AC voltages. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And thank you to the National Fluid Power Association for sponsoring this video.